Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited to bring you guys this video because I am doing my first ever story time. I promised you guys story time ages ago and it took me so long to I'm do it. I'm in such a happy mood today. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's really sunny outside. Spring is almost here. I don't have to wear so many layers of clothes. Or maybe it's just because I'm bringing you guys this story time. I'm going to give you guys the details, the tea on this catfish story. So you might want to get yourself some tea or some popcorn or something, a glass of wine, because you're going to be like, Rrr. you might want to do that. So get that and let's get into this story time. You guys remember MySpace? Remember MySpace Tom used to slide into your DMs? Well, it wasn't DMs then, it was inboxes, wasn't it? Anyway, this is what the story is about. It was back in the days of MySpace. I was about 16, 17, maybe 18, I can't really remember. I had just moved back to England and I was living in Birmingham at the time. And I was looking to make friends. I didn't have any friends on there, so I thought, okay, let me go onto my MySpace and, you know, make some friends. Back in those days, I used to watch a lot of BT. So the type of guys that I was attracted to would be, you know, the muscles and the tattoos and the light skin and the cornrows and, and anything with the name that starts with T-Y, like Tyrese, Tyrone, Tyrell, Tyson, the American type, and yeah. One of those pulls up in my DMs and he's doing all these like motions like, you know, in his pictures, that's what he looks like. My eyes instantly had that little heart-shaped emoji. I was like, yes! I was here for all of it. God knows what I was thinking back then. And he's messaging me, he's like, hey, I've just moved to London. Um, you look good, what's up, shorty? I can't remember how old he was. I think he was like 20 or 21. The age of consent is 16, by the way, in the UK. So I wasn't like illegal or anything. But I am thinking that I'm grown, you know? You know when these little girls think they're grown? That was me all over. And I'm messaging back like, hi, what's up? I'm still a little bit shy, I don't know what to say to him, so I'm Googling like things to say. But I didn't have to do much, he was so into it. He was like, yeah, you look really cool and blah, blah, blah. And we talked for about three, maybe three weeks, two, three weeks. And I thought, okay, now nah, it's time to meet this guy. I'm gonna go to London and I'm gonna meet him. Bear in mind that Birmingham is almost two and a half hours away, right? I didn't tell anyone I'm going. In fact, I haven't told anyone this story. I haven't told Amy, I haven't told my mum, nobody. I think I told my mum that I was going to London, but I told her I was going to my uncle's house. I booked my tickets and everything. I don't have that much money. I cake myself with makeup thinking that I look good. I probably look like a potato with lipstick or an oompa loompa. He lived in some backwards area, some Timbuktu place. I don't even know where it was because I wasn't that familiar with London at the time. I had tunnel vision. I didn't care where he lived, where... I was just like, this is what I want. Heart eyes, I'm going for this. It didn't even occur to me that maybe this guy isn't even who he says he was. Like, catfish wasn't even a thing back in, like, in those days. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> Finally get to London. I have, like, a little Sonny Ericsson Walkman. I don't know if any of you guys had those. That's the phone that I had. So I'm, I'm looking at my little messages, listening to my music. Finally get to the place. Uh, I'm standing outside in the station. I'm like, oh yeah, are you coming to meet me? I don't get a text back. He finally texts me back and then he says, can you meet me at so-and-so place? At this point, I'm starting to get a little inkling in the back of my head thinking, oh, okay, why can't he just meet me at the station? Here's where I'm starting to get little prickles going down my arm thinking, mm, this doesn't sound right. That's the only time that I thought, maybe, I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I should have told somebody where I'm going. I get to the place now. This is from me walking from the station where you were supposed to meet me originally. I get there and it's quiet. Like we're not anywhere near the main road anymore. There's not many people walking around, maybe one or two people. And it just looks derelict. And I was like, oh my god now this time you probably think that i would leave but he sent me a message just as i was about to leave saying oh no i'm just around the corner i'm coming so i'm waiting for this sexy six foot something to roll up all of a sudden this short black and i say black i mean dark like dark chocolate brown bald-headed uncle out the blue walking up to me so i don't take my headphones out because i don't think this is the person that i'm i'm here to meet i'm just gonna air that person because 
that's what you do. Just straight blank. Like, I don't even see you. I'm on my phone. This guy comes and puts his hand around my arm. I'm like, the I'm not a rude person, but I can get pretty rude if I want. That's how I know I could handle myself. I can get really feisty if I need to. I take out my headphones. I'm like, excuse me. And he's like smiling at me. Don't panic or don't panic. He's fine. And I'm like, I don't know you. Don't touch me. <laughs> I'm starting to lose it. He's like, no, no, Tyree sent me. I'm going to come bring you to... I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going anywhere. He said he's going to come meet me here. I'm not going anywhere. He still has his arm around me and he's now starting to move. He's now starting to walk with me. I'm little, you guys. I'm not big. He is a big guy. He's got his arm around me and he's moving me forward. And I'm saying, no, my heart at this point is like... <laughs> It's beating out of my chest. Like, if it could come out and rip out, it would happen. I'm just like, okay, don't panic. I still haven't registered in my head. This is the guy who was messaging me from his mother's basement with probably other people tied up in the basement pretending to be this hottie that I met on MySpace. That has not clicked in my head at all at this point. I am literally buying all the bullshit of yeah i'm his cousin he told me to come get you because he can't come because this 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 and the other i get a text assuming it's tyrese saying oh i just sent my cousin so and so to come and get you it's fine don't worry about it so now i'm a little bit calm i'm like okay maybe it is just his cousin i'll go with him you guys are probably like oh my god what were you thinking i wasn't thinking <laughs> He starts walking with me, he's not being disrespectful, he's not touching me, he's not doing anything that I don't like. So I'm like, okay, this is not too bad, I'm still fine. Meanwhile, at this point, it now has occurred to me that maybe I should text someone and say where I am. I message my best friend at the time, say, uh, I'm meeting this guy in London, I'm now in blah blah blah, this is the station that I was at, this is the... He then leads me to this house and he's like oh yeah we're all in there we're chilling would you like a drink blah 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 let's go inside did i not go inside like an idiot there's no tyrese it's just this guy and me in a house the door's closed the panic that went through my body mm, oh my god so now we're in this house i'm sitting here he's sitting there and the penny drops I am shitting myself. I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it out of here. I don't know what's gonna happen. What is he gonna do? What's he trying to plan? Where are my escape routes? Where's my exit? I sit there and he's offering me a drink. I'm not drinking anything so I can put a drug in it and I don't remember what happens. I wake up in some garage or don't wake up at all next day. I'm just like, no thanks, I'm okay. I'm being really nice because I don't want him to switch because I don't know if this guy's a psycho or he must be psycho because he catfished me. Could have stayed at home, I could have been chilling. But no, I had to be making friends, didn't I? Friends. I'm sitting there, he's sitting across from me. He's like, okay, I'm, I am going to complete now. I, I have to tell you something. And I'm just like, yeah, I kind of figured it out. I kind of, I get it. If you'd just been yourself and I would have come to meet you. Where? Just saying this so this guy doesn't switch and doesn't start going nuts at me and try to kill me. Luckily enough, he didn't lock the door. So I am now seeking my moment to escape from this potential hell that could be on earth for me. He goes into the bathroom, he goes off and does whatever he's doing. He's like, oh, make yourself at home, blah, blah, blah. I hightail it out of there like nobody's business. By the time he, before he even closed the door, I was probably back in Birmingham already. I could not get out of there fast enough. Oh my God, I should have called child service. I should have called everybody, pedophile, every. Friggin the guy looked like he was 40. At that time, my phone is ringing off the hook. I'm surprised I didn't drop the phone in the trash or something when I was going. I was just out of there. Got on the train, went to visit my uncle because I did tell my mum that I was going to visit my uncle. And we just have a candid chat. We talk like nothing's happened. My mother would have killed me at the time. Ooh, maybe I can tell her now. Well, she's going to see it because she watches my YouTube channel. Sorry, mum. I know it's close to Mother's Day. Could not have had a daughter right now. I know I'm a little bit dangerous at times. Lessons learned. Nowadays, whenever I go out or if I'm going somewhere that I don't know someone, I put on Find Me app in my phone and Amy has like my address. She has everything about me. She knows where I am. She can pinpoint everything, every place that I've gone. 
we ain't taking no chances out here okay i can laugh about this now but it was freaking scary to think you're meeting someone that you know that you've talked to that you feel like you've got a connection with to realize that it's a completely different person the whole time like what was real what was fake who is this person who am i <laughs> that was what i was questioning my entire life and all my decisions I've never made that mistake again, ever. I've never, ever been catfished after that. I mean, I have been, like, but I found them out because I Google image searched them before we ever met or anything like that. And I'd just be like, yeah, you need to take that person's Instagram photo off your freaking profile because you ain't fooling anybody, honey. Not today, Satan. When they say the devil is a liar, it is real. Not me. It was not my time. Thank you, Jesus. So, lesson here is, make sure if you're going to meet someone online, that you actually tell somebody where you're going, you've done your research and you know that they're a real person, and that you don't have tunnel vision because you want these relationship goals. Because what might be relationship goals for one person might be the end of you. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little story time. If you enjoyed the story, let me know if you want to hear more. I have so many more crazy stories. I think that's why I'm a little bit nuts and outgoing and have such a crazy personality because of all the stuff that I've been through. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next one.